Welcome back to another video. Hope everybody is well. And today's project is going to be the Lesney Matchbox number 21. Comer Bottle Float or Comer Bottle Float. I actually have two, as you see here, and I chose one of the two, both in relatively decent shape as far as the plastics uh, and the glass are concerned. So I believe I chose that one that's holding in my hand right now because the other one had two little rivet posts and this one just snaps out of the base. So you can see they were both a little bit discolored. Um, I found a pistachio rattle can paint that I use for this. So showing you here how I actually pried this apart and it came apart rather easily and I did not have to worry about um, deforming the body very much. It actually slid out pretty simply. So the Lesney 21 Commer Bottle Float vehicle um, was produced from years 1961 to 1967. Um, the first two years, the decal, or you see the cow on the door, was actually a milk bottle, and they actually had the gray wheels. So this is a later version. This could be anywhere from 63 to 67. And um, she's gone for a dip in the paint stripper. Getting started on everything else. So here is our removal of the axles. A painstaking pro painstaking process for me for you know certain certain axles seem to be a little bit easier to remove than others. So I just have show a little patience and stick with it. And my plastic pieces are soaking in some soapy water. And I'm struggling to remove the axles. But I eventually get there. If you're not. <clears throat> I think I'm going to look for a different, um, a different attachment or a different tool to put in my Dremel. Uh, these stone bits seem to be... Well, as, mu as much as I like them... They don't seem to do the job as quickly and efficiently. So axles are out. Uh, wheels are now soaking with the other plastic parts. And now I am just cleaning up the axles and putting holes in my sandpaper. This process I, I actually enjoy, uh, especially if the axles are in really rough shape. So it's nice to give them a good polish on the ends and get any rust and oxidation off the shaft itself. And uh, the side with the burr that we're usually um, trying to remove to get the wheels off, um, it's nice to finish up that end as well and get it smooth. So... This process goes pretty quickly. And here's our plastic parts getting scrubbed with a toothbrush. This piece had a tiny little hole near one of the milk crates towards the top of the uh, towards the top of the plastic. And it was a little bit more yellowed than the one in the other vehicle. But it came clean enough for me. Um, probably could have repainted it or tried to maybe bleach it. <clears throat> but I left it just the way I could get it. As clean as I could get it was good enough. Now I'm just uh, cleaning up some of the dust bunnies that are caught in the wheel hubs. And you can probably guess what's coming up after this. Could it be? Yes, Future Shine. 
What I did though here on this plastic windshield was I used this metal polish cream and I just applied a little bit of that paste and hit it with my buffing wheel on my uh, drill press. That is without any future shine on it whatsoever and I chose not to dip it in future shine. I think that was about as fantastic a job as I've ever done or was able to do on a plastic windshield. Uh, that was the original. So it was in really good shape to begin with. I mildly hit it with my fret eraser. And then, like I said, um, I used some of that uh, new polish uh, that I've got and just buffed it up. So we dipped our interior milk bottles. And now we're doing the wheels and putting them in our little Sputnik cup. I'm still working on getting this autofocus to react the way I want it and pick up the tracking whenever I put something in front of the lens. So we're almost there. So this is an easy process. You've seen me do it before. Toothpick um, to help dunk the wheel in the pledge future shine. And then we wick off any excess, make sure it's not caked and pulled in the uh, wheel hub. And then we just set them to dry. Important that you get any moisture off before you dip them in there because it will turn white. Uh, and it may not dry clear, so make sure they're dry before you dip them in the future shine, if that's what you're using. And here are the two paints I chose. I just picked this up. This is going to be the first attempt at using it. Appliance Epoxy from Rust-Oleum. Factory Smooth Finish. I'm going to use that for the base. And this is a Color Master Cover Max Pistachio Satin by Krylon. And there is the finished piece. Getting ready for decal application, I believe. So I chose the rattle can method, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's an, an enamel base and I don't have to use acrylic paint and then shoot it with a clear or a satin sealer um, before I put the decals on. Water base decals, when you're dipping them and you're applying them to an acrylic paint job, chances are you could make some a little bit of a mess. Uh, the acrylic paint, if it's not dry completely, or it's just depending on the composition of the paint, you could move some paint around with some water. So I've been choosing to go the rattle can method on a lot of this stuff. If I can find matching paint, it may be a little bit more costly. Um, I'm finding the results to be very, very good. So I may choose to start using enamel model paint. And that might be the next way I go, but we'll see. But anyway, here is my, um, I believe this is the top banner where it says drink more milk. And we're applying that to the little banner head billboard, whatever you like to call it, it's sticking up on the top of the vehicle. So like I said, I'm trying to use enamel paint as my base coat, uh, whether it's uh, satin or glossy, depends on the situation. So for this, I knew I was going to apply a decal and then I was going to want to seal the decal. So I chose a satin finish. And then once the decals are on and dried completely, I use a clear coat, um, Rust-Oleum Poly clear coat. and give it the nice gloss finish, like the original. You can see that first, uh, the original that I'm holding in my left hand is a little more yellow. Now that could be from aging, that could be the UV changing the paint, who knows. Um, and the one I'm holding in my hand is just, frankly, pistachio green, the way it is. Um, 
I don't know. That could have been in a smoke a house where there were smokers. Who knows? Um, but no matter how you slice it, I'm happy with the pistachio green that I chose. And uh, seeing pictures of probably dozens of these, um, the paint, there was definitely differences in the paint. So, again, we're not making a, a, a restoration um, to the letter. Matter of fact, the repro decals from Black Square decals, the cows are different than the original cows. So, right out of the gate, you're kind of stuck making uh, a restoration that's original. It's not original restoration at all. So, by not mixing the paint to match, uh, I think I'm all right. So getting my cows in place here on the doors, a little bit of Microsol to help set the decal. And then once they're dry, they get a nice clear coat. And I actually, I believe I did, I think I got a little booger on the roof of dust when I put the, uh, applied the clear coat. And I think I had to buff it out, I'm not sure. It's been probably a week since I actually finished this model and now doing the voiceover, so who can remember? But I wanted to show the, uh, the decal application in its full entirety. You know, it's a, I think it's just a good learning tool. Um, oh, yeah. I picked up these cool little, I don't know, which guillotine scissors, guillotine scissors at a local flea market for two bucks to cut uh, precise cuts. That's what I actually use to get the decals off of the main sheet. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I think it's good to show the decal application in its entirety. It gives uh, those that are trying to, uh, or just breaking into the hobby and learning how to do this. Um, Gives them a good idea of what kind of time they can expect um, or dedicate to doing decal work. Ooh, and then we just flopped one over there. This was a good one. I did manage to save it. Um, but like I said, it gives a, gives beginners a an idea of what kind of time and uh, if you want to call it dedication, how much time you should put aside. Um, to do this kind of work. It can be tedious because especially when you've got small decals, um, you can you can rack your brains or you can have a mishap like I just did where it's not recoverable and then you've blown it and you have to order a new decal or produce another one if you're making your own. So I figured I'd shoot this in its entirety without any fast forwarding. So I use my Q-tips to set and push any air and water out from underneath the decal. And then Microsol. I probably waste more Microsol by wicking it on paper towel, but like uh, I've said in the past, it's easier to add more than it is to try and remove Microsol because if you put too much down, it will inevitably soften the decal and start to shrink in a sense and it will curl I've been there it's not fun so better to waste some microsol and apply a second or even a third layer to get it to uh, adhere to the model so here I've already reattached my wheels using Marty's method uh, you should check Marty Marty's matchbox makeovers to see how that process is done and uh, here I got a little confused in my assembly don't ask me why it was probably just a, a long day but uh, there's my wonderful windshield without the use of any future shine and here's where I got messed up uh, probably wasn't paying attention when I was taking it apart as usual and uh, I just 
I had a little bit of a brain fart trying to get this thing back together here, but again, I muddled through, figured it out. Uh, wasn't it's not rocket science or brain surgery. But it's an odd, there is no, um, there's no markings or anything anywhere for it, so. Then I figured, hey, you know what, it's probably the best to put it on the base and then shove the whole base in. Which is what I did. I think. No, I'll put that in first. But I got there and... Even more importantly, um, the base just snapped back in. So there's no glue. And those two little um, flanges, one on each side, fits into the recessed piece on the back of the back of the model and the recessed piece in the front of the model. And all it took was a push and it snaps right in. And good to go. So you will see the appliance uh, paint, the Rust-Oleum appliance finish, uh, once I finish wiping this off and getting my prints off it, you'll see how the base paint actually lay pretty flat and super, super shiny. So I was pretty impressed with the first use of this, and I will use it in subsequent models. You can see I applied a clear coat there's the finish that I was talking about. Pretty impressed with it. I think it went a little heavy. Um, I could probably back off a little bit. But I was pretty impressed with it. And now we've got a free rolling vehicle. Just as good as new. And we'll compare it to the other original. So you can see the the sign is a little different, so those decals aren't exact reproductions. And if you look at the cows, one is a very spotty cow, as opposed to the original cow has uh, bigger spots. All in all, successful and very happy. And here's the final view. Uh, I did paint the grill before I clear coated and the headlights, so they have a nice little silvery look to them. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Another successful Matchbox restoration. Um, definitely one of my favorite vehicles of the, uh, the Lesney Matchbox line. So, the other one, I don't know, um, Next time I put in a, uh, an order for black square decals, I may order another set and then eventually redo that one and maybe ship one of them off to somebody. So there she is in all her glory. The Lesney 21 Commer Bottle Float in pistachio green. So... I hope everyone is well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you, uh, you do like these videos, please leave comments, subscribe, um, get in touch with me if there's anything you'd like to see me tackle or just have questions on the way I do some of this stuff. So until the next time, guys, I hope you're all well. Stay safe. Have a good one.